Today on BRS TV, we have the Digital Aquatics Reef Keeper line of aquarium controllers. I've been personally using the Reef Keeper line of controllers since they came out with the Reef Keeper 2. Since then, they've come out with the Reef Keeper Elite as well as the Reef Keeper Lite series. I believe this to be the best combination of ease of use, features, and cost, which really makes it one of the best values out there. So if you've never owned an aquarium controller before, you're probably thinking that the primary reason you would purchase one is to automate your system and make reefing easier. And while it will do that, the primary reason I own a controller is to detect and protect my system from all of the most common aquarium disasters. So let's start with the Reef Keeper Lite Basic, which comes with the control module. This is what you're going to use to program the unit, as well as display the aquarium parameters. It also comes with a high quality temperature probe and a controllable power bar. The Reef Keeper Lite comes with the functionality to control your heaters, chillers, fans, lighting, skimmer, wave maker, pumps, float switches, and virtually anything that operates on a digital timer. So like most aquarium controllers out there, you can use the control module to program your unit. However, with the Reef Keeper, you can also use the My Reef software and your computer to program the unit, which really simplifies the process. Setting the system up for something like a fan is as simple as selecting your outlet, choosing the fan option, and then telling the system you want it to turn the fan on if the tank ever goes over 80 degrees. The included power bar has four controllable outlets, which can be used in 100 different arrangements. However, I'm going to go over what I believe to be the most common arrangement for the basic model. And that's going to be to control your lights as well as save you from a variety of heat related problems. Sadly, these things tend to fail in the on position as often as they fail off. If it fails off, you probably have a pretty substantial amount of time before there's any negative effects in the aquarium. However, it fails on and continually heats the aquarium up, it has the potential to wipe it out in a single day. It absolutely kills me that our entire tank is dependent on this single $30 piece of equipment. So you can help protect yourself from heater failure with a standalone heater controller like one of these. However, I feel the Reef Keeper Lite actually represents the best value because it's not only a fantastic heater controller, but it also comes with the ability to do a hundred other things as well. The Reef Keeper Lite comes with its own temperature probe, which reads down to a tenth of a degree. This is much better than the standard few degree swing that most heaters have. If the heater ever does fail in the on position, it will turn off power to the plug and save your tank. On top of that, you can set up an audible as well as visual alarm to let you know when the heater failure occurs. This is important because they can often go unlooked and the only indicator is the tank is beginning to go south. Beyond heater failures, the other common causes of tanks overheating are lighting, air conditioning and chiller failures, and some of the dumb things that your family can do. It's pretty common for your home's AC to fail or trip a switch breaker at some point. Of course, it seems to only happen on the hottest summer days or when you're not around. Same thing could be said of the aquarium chiller. Or worse yet, somebody in your household may get a really brilliant idea and turn the AC off to save a few bucks. So this is where the next two outlets come into play. If the heat begins to rise, it will not only obviously shut off power to your heater, but if it continues to rise beyond that, you can have it set up to turn on a fan to help cool down the tank. And if it continues to rise beyond that even, you can have it set up to turn off a portion or even all of your lights. This combination of protective measures is going to help a vast majority of reefers avoid all of the most common temperature related disasters. If your tank has more frequent heat spikes, you can use the last plug-in for your aquarium chiller. So the beauty of this system is the functionality doesn't end there. You can add up to four modules at any given time to the light. This includes additional power bars. You can have pH and ORP controllers. You can add float switches to turn the system into an auto top off. You can even add the net module, which will allow for easy graphing as well as on the go system alerts. So if you step up to the Reef Keeper Lite Plus package, you'll receive everything that was in the basic package, as well as a PH ORP and switch controller, a PH probe, and an additional power bar. Beyond the additional power bar, 
The biggest difference with the Plus system is the addition of the pH monitor and controller. There's a lot of reasons why you might want to monitor your pH, but for me, the primary reason is because it's a good indicator of when something's wrong. Not only will it display the pH for you to see, but it'll also set off an audible as well as visual alarm to actually notify me that there's a problem so I can still do something about it while there's time. Because this is a pH controller, not just a monitor, you can actually use it to turn equipment on and off based on the pH of the aquarium. Some reefers might use this to control and adjust the pH of the aquarium itself. For me, the primary purpose is to protect myself from common equipment failures like float switches. One of the most common ways to maintain pH, calcium, and alkalinity is a float switch based auto top off system combined with saturated kelp wasser. While this is a fantastic method of maintaining these three things, anybody who has used float switches for more than a few years knows how susceptible they are to power surges, snails, algae, and salt creep. So many reefers might feel safe because they designed this system with two float switches with the second one as a backup. However, I know from personal experience that the things that make the first one fail can easily make the second one fail as well. Now this obviously has a devastating impact on the aquarium as your entire water reservoir dumps into the aquarium, but this can have an equally negative impact on your floors and marriage. This is where your pH controller function comes in. If or when your float switches eventually do fail you, what will happen is they'll get stuck on and the pump will continually add the saturated kelp water to your aquarium. However, by doing this, it's going to raise the pH as well. After it gets past the set point, the pH controller will actually turn off the pump to your auto top off system. And better yet, it will set off an alarm letting you know that your auto top off system has failed and you either need to maintenance or replace it. Another common use for the pH controller is to control the pH of the fluid inside your calcium reactor to make sure it's in the optimal range for melting the media. You can also use it on the aquarium to protect your tank from a malfunctioning calcium reactor, in which case if the pH were ever get too low, it would turn off the feed pump to the calcium reactor and more importantly, it would set off an alarm and let you know that there's a problem. The pH module also has an ORP probe port, so if you wanted to purchase a ORP probe, you could monitor and control the ORP. In most cases, this would be because you wanted to implement ozone with your system. Because the Plus comes with an additional power bar, you can begin plugging in additional equipment, like some power heads or a protein skimmer. This will allow you to take advantage of some of the other functions, like the standby feeding mode, or if your pumps are compatible, the wave maker function. You can also add basically anything that requires a digital timer to operate, including dosing pumps, a refugium light, or even a fan that you might want only on during the day. The net module, which allows you to access your reef keeper from any PC for logging, setup, and graphing. The net module also allows you to program the unit using the MyReef software without running a bus cable between the unit and your PC. It also is going to send you those alerts we talked about via email. If your phone accepts email, you can get alerts up to your phone. There are even ways to send text messages via email. The ALC module controls the popular Aqua Illuminations LED fixtures. You can even add an additional pH or ORP controller. Really, when you consider the entire system, all of what it does, all the protections that it provides, and the relatively low price point, I just can't see a reason not to own one at this point. If you are interested in being notified when we make new additions to BRS TV, you can sign up for our newsletter found on almost every product page. You can also log into your account and hit the Newsletter Subscriptions tab.